Hey, Bill Davis here from Charter Markets. It's Saturday, October 15th, 9.30 p.m. And I want to look at the chart of Tesla. Let's go ahead and move into the chart. Okay, this is the daily chart. As you can see, just like many of the other charts that we looked at, Thursday was a very bullish move. In the markets why did we have this bullish move doesn't really matter but we got the bullish move um, it did happen when the European markets closed so that could have had something to do with it but in any case it doesn't matter what we come up with because we'll never really know the truth of why we had such a violent spike after the European close. Friday, as we all know, was dreadful for a lot of um, people trading. Let's see. We did have a couple trades on Friday, but Tesla was not one of them. So here's the trades that I was in on Friday. In and out periodically. You know, coulda, woulda, shoulda stayed in the uh, trades a little bit longer. Could have made, uh, could have made some better profits. My screen seemed to switch on me, so. Let me pull the screen up. Let's see if I can't make this screen up bigger here. So the trades that we were in, in four of them, well, five of them. I'm not sure if that's very visible or not. There we go. So as you can see, we were in a couple of spy trades in some um, in some puts. Well, before that, we were in Apple on Thursday. Is that right? Is that calls. Hmm. Now I can't remember what my positions were. I have um, debit calls in here, but I don't know if I was in actually in debit puts. Okay, this is back. This is messed up. That's what this is. Because I was thinking to myself, why would I be in calls? Because when I saw that rush on Thursday to the upside, it did not seem very uh, organized. It seemed like it was, I don't know, it could have been algos, it could have been anything, but it just didn't seem like, it didn't seem like the flows, the volume, and the, um, the breadth of the market just didn't seem right to me. So I grabbed Apple puts uh, sometime near, I'd say, near the end of the day. And close those out the next day for a small profit. Right here. And then uh, Friday, in between a couple, uh, and some between some activities, I grabbed three different positions on SPY. Uh, coulda, woulda, shoulda. You know, coulda held it all day, literally, and just banked on it. Uh, just sitting back in the recliner doing nothing. Anyhow, uh, all three of those spy trades that were profitable. And then for the for the day, that's what we end up with for the day. 
We're closing out Trades Friday. All right, back to the chart for Tesla. Let's look at some levels. Again, massive day on the uh, on Friday. Got rejected off the monthly level and breached through our micro level, and we will be heading. Well, let me rephrase that. We should be, in my opinion, should be heading down to this 197.45. And if things start to get really messy, I would say our next candidate is down towards this 171.79, which is an additional uh, monthly level. If we were going to have some kind of bullish sentiment, I mean, I guess if the market opened up bullish for some odd reason, I mean, it's still a good six, uh, that's 205. It's a good $5 away from retesting this 213 level. So we're kind of almost in the middle between these two levels right now. So there's just not a lot to go off of here. Let's put a dotted line in here. And we'll look at this on the intraday. Now these levels aren't valid right now for intraday. So we'll turn those off. We do have the levels from the daily chart. Those are valid. Let me pull my spreadsheet up on the other screen. And I'll be able to put some levels in here. Let's see, first level for intraday. Will be the 280.51. Now these levels, this level here that we're putting... Uh, 280.51. That can't be right. Oh, that's, I'm looking at the wrong screen. The wrong metrics. It's actually 211.80. Now these levels are good for Monday. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't use these again on Tuesday or Wednesday. But we will have additional, you know, we have new levels on a daily basis for intraday. So just keep checking in. You can reach out, check in. I'll try to do some videos. And 198.15. So you can see with the brown lines, we have a lot of confluence right here at this 190, 190 28. And then it just gets even more bearish. If we're, if we're going downside, you can see the level will start to really increase here. This is 176.05. So that's our downside. Upside, I would say. Two seventeen oh two. Again, these are intraday. And two two oh two five. 
Okay. It would be a level in here too. So let's get, let's get at it. Okay. So intraday, if we're starting from top to bottom, two 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 point eight five. Two two zero two five, two one seven point oh two, two one one point eighty, two oh three twenty six. Well, that's actually supposed to be two oh three thirty six. One ninety eight fifteen, and then one seventy six oh five. If we go back to our daily chart, our confluence level is 225.89 slash 224.57. That's upside resistance. And let's see, where did Tesla close? Tesla closed. Um, what level is that? Just above our 204.86. So that would be a level to watch. If Tesla starts to break below that 204.86 or does one of these numbers where it opens up and hurry up and does a retest, that could be an area, 204.86, to keep an eye on for um, potential downside. But but also look to see if it tests this area to get a bounce with some continuation. Because uh, maybe it wants to uh, move up in this general area a little bit here. Uh, I don't have those levels up yet. No, I don't, I don't have that level up at the moment. Oh, here we go. Um, if if it does move up, we can add a blue line here. Two thirteen thirty two. So we have a micro here. So if 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 it dances around this line, say it goes up to two thirteen thirty two, which would be a pretty good move. You know, we, we have this area here where we can see maybe there's going to be a run up to this level and maybe a rejection back down towards a retest of the 2486 and maybe down to this 197.45 to 198.20, which is both a monthly and daily confluence level. Let's see if there's anything down here. Let me see if there's a, let me add another level in here because this one's kind of wide. This is a very wide move. Let's go ahead and put, 184.62 into this level. So if we get if we get some downside breakage of these of this confluence here, we can look at the 184.62. So let's look at levels again, from top to bottom. Uh, 224.57 and 225.89. Two thirteen thirty two, two oh four eighty six, one ninety seven forty five, a micro level of one eighty four sixty two, one seventy one seventy, and one sixty uh, one forty six twelve. Those are your levels for Tesla. Everything still just screams bearish, so we'll see if we get some upside testing or not. Um, 
all eyes will be on the futures, obviously. And, uh, you know, we have midterms coming up and I don't want to regurgitate my other videos that I posted today, but, you know, get, please check those out and see what my thoughts are with the Fed and why I believe that continued downside will be the ultimate outcome, regardless if there's a pause or a pivot, uh, especially when we're talking about going back to quantitative easing, just like Europe is doing. It's political and it's panicky. And it's just a recipe for potential more disaster in the uh, global and U.S. economics and the stock market. At least those are my thoughts. All right. Other than that, a quick review here of, of Tesla. Uh, like, the, um, like the video. Follow us on YouTube. Uh, comment on the video to see... You know, these are these levels that, that you have. Um, have you watched previous videos that were helpful in some of your trading decisions or incorporated into your trading rules? Uh, follow us on Facebook. Like and comment on the videos and posts uh, in that platform as well. And please share these videos with others as we try to grow this community. Thank you. Hope this uh, video was helpful and have a good weekend.